Well, today we're out at uh, Mount Hope. Mount Hope is one of my favorite places to photograph things. So I come up here pretty regularly to photograph old machinery, um, old sheds, rocky outcrops, dead trees, all that sort of stuff. And they make for some really cool astro photos. Mount Hope was named by Major Mitchell. Major Mitchell, this is part of the Major Mitchell track and you can, I'll put a link down the bottom here and you can see what that's all about. But it's named after, or named by Major Mitchell, um, called Mount Hope and what he was doing, he climbed up this hill here because around this country here, it is flat, as flat, as flat as a billiard table. And you can see for a bloody long way. So as he was surveying this area, he climbed to the top of this, this uh, rocky outcrop here in the hope that he could see uh, the Murray River and um, hence Mount Hope. You wouldn't come up here in the dark. Um, there's some pretty, it's a pretty dangerous area if you're not familiar with it. So I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't suggest coming up here in the dark or even in the pre-dawn or even coming for a sunset photo and trying to climb back down off the hill in the dark. Um, there's some pretty significant drop-offs here, some of them 15, 20 metres, and you'll absolutely do yourself some damage. In fact, there's a, a rock over the back there um, called Suicide Rock, and that's, I think it's a bit more folklore than what it is actual fact. Apparently some people uh, rode, a, some bloke rode his horse off there and uh, committed suicide, so I think if you can get a horse to jump off a cliff, good luck to you. But anyway, that's what it's called. That's what certainly what locals know it as, is Suicide Rock. So, um... Why are we here? We're here today to learn how to plan for an astro photo shoot. Let's get into it. G'day guys, Shane Austin here. I live in Kahuna, North Central Victoria here in Australia, and I run this channel specifically for mobile photography. So if you take photos with your phone, this is a good channel that you're going to learn quite a few things from. I do all sorts of photography, but specialize in the low light photography. That's astrophotography, photos of the stars, photos of the moon, low light photography, nighttime photography, light trails, long exposure stuff. So if you're into that sort of thing and you want to see what our sort of countryside and where we are here, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you see two videos every week, Monday and a Friday. All right guys, let's get into this one. So when it comes to planning for your astro photo shoot, one of the first things you need to be mindful of is light pollution. So if you're trying to photograph the night sky and there's lots of light around, including the moon, it's not going to work as well as what it would if there was no light. So sure, you can take photos of the stars in a reasonably built up area with lights and street lights and so forth, but you're not going to see a lot of stars. You're going to see a lot more stars if you get out away from the cities and focus on a time where there's no moon. If there is a moon, a small moon, like a slither of the moon, or up anything up to half of a moon, you're going to still get some pretty good stars and it's going to light the foreground as well. So you can use the moon to your advantage. To demonstrate what I mean by away from the cities, here's a photo that I took of Cow Swamp, and I'll take you there in another video. Out of Cow Swamp, I took this as the Milky Way was rising, and you can see on the horizon those clusters of lights, they're actually towns. So you can see a lot of light coming from those towns and those towns are, towns are some 60 kilometers away. So you really need to get away from those towns. So when it comes to choosing a subject that you want to photograph in an astrophotography sort of photo, you can really do anything. Uh, I've done vehicles, tractors, trucks, old bombed out cars, rocks, trees, dead trees, all people, all sorts of things can be done for this. And there's really two ways that you do it. One is that you light the subject, and one is that you let the subject silhouette itself in the night sky. Um, so what we've got here is a rock that, it's a rock that's it's unusual, it sits sits up nice and tall. It's unlike any other rocks around here, same colour and everything, but it sits nice and tall. It's got a nice split through the middle and it can make an interesting photo. I've taken a few photos of this one and um, what we're going to do here is find out when the Milky Way will be up behind this rock so we work out when to photograph it. All right, let's get into that. So once you've found the subject that you want to photograph, in this case it's going to be the rock, 
What you need to learn now is all the constellations of the stars. You need to know what all the stars are, where they all sit. Um, way back in the army days, I learnt about uh, how to find south with the Southern Cross and the two pointers. So, no, nah, just joking, you don't need to know any of that. You need to get yourself an app. The app is called Photo Pills and it's a gun app. It's fantastic. It's a great app for astrophotography. So what we're going to do now is photograph this or work out when we're going to photograph this. But first, let's talk about photo pills. So we're going to open up photo pills and we're going to first go into the night AR. Night AR is augmented reality. So it's going to use the camera on the back of the phone with the software and superimpose the Milky Way or the galactic core over the wherever it is in the sky at the time. But first what we need to do is calibrate it. So I'm going to go into night AR. Down the bottom there, you've got visual calibration. I'm going to hit that. It's going to give me the warning there of how to do it. Hit OK. And if we scroll through this here, you see the sun is moving there. That's that circle there. Now, if we find the sun in the sky, there it is there, and put the sun over that, it's done. Hit the tick, and we're calibrated. All right? Now then, what we're going to do now is go into night AR and work out where the Milky Way will be in relation to this rock. So if I point the camera up at the rock, that's the rock that we just saw before, and then I scroll left or, or up or down, I should say, and it's going to give me where the Milky Way will be. So you can see the Milky Way up sitting behind there. If I bring that a little bit lower, we could end up with a photo just like that, with the rock and the Milky Way sitting up there behind it. What time do we need to be here? Four o'clock in the morning. Are you committed enough to do that? I am. Let's get into it. Now, of course, I'm just kidding about that. We're not really going to come back at four o'clock in the morning because, uh, quite frankly, it's too bloody cold. So, how are we going to work out when we need to be here at a more reasonable time for us human beings when we're going to have the Milky Way sitting up behind this rock? Well, we'll go back into this app. So, we're going to the app and we'll scroll up to where we were before and we'll see there it's way early in the morning. What we want to do though is go into settings. We're going to change the date. Let's change this date to um, say, let's say September. And the reason we're doing that is because the galactic core over the season will change its place because of the rotation and the axis of the Earth. It'll change its place later in the season. So right now, if we want to take this photo, we need to be here at four o'clock in the morning. But if we came back here in say September, let's do that, done, done and we'll rotate this sky through its time. There you go. We can take a different photo with the Milky Way over this way at a more reasonable time, I would think. There's three, there's four, six, seven, eight o'clock at night, 8.30 at night, and there we've got the photo. So we don't need to get up at a stupid hour in the morning. I used to do that, not so much anymore, and uh, shoot the Milky Way. All right, guys, that's how I plan my astro photo shoots. Uh, I'm pretty keen to see what you guys like to shoot or hear about it. Uh, do you like to photograph people, uh, trees, rocks, vehicles? What sort of things do you like to photograph with the Milky Way or with the stars at night? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Next week, what I'm going to do is show you how to light paint a subject whilst we're photographing the stars in the background so that they're all nice and crisp and you can do it on a phone. All right, we'll get into that. Next week, catch you then.